So chapter three, stoichiometry, ratios of combination. Well, we've talked about atomic mass. Remember what atomic mass was? The mass of an atom, right? And what were the units we used on that? AMU. AMU, atomic mass units. So the molecular mass is the mass of an individual molecule, again, in atomic mass units. Because when we're measuring things that are so incredibly small, a unit like gram is not very useful. <coughs> and so we're going to use um, atomic mass units. So the sum of the atomic masses of the atoms that make up the molecule. So we're finding the mass of the molecule. A molecule is two or more atoms bonded together. So to find the mass of the whole molecule, you just add the masses of all the pieces. That should be fairly straightforward. So for water, just as an example, to find the mass of one molecule of water, there are two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. So we take two times the atomic mass of hydrogen. That's from the periodic table. And then we add one times the atomic mass of oxygen, add those together, and the mass of one water molecule is 18.02. Yep. For this kind of uh, math, do we still have to pay attention to like, uh, numbers significant figures? That's a good question. What about significant figures? Um, sig figs get, get uh, or people think about it different ways. Um, you'll notice that the, the um, periodic table, um, if you've looked at the one in your textbook, all of the molar masses or the atomic masses are rounded to four significant figures. And that's done more out of convenience. Um, the one up here on the wall, you'll see that different elements have different numbers of significant figures. So this is more all the digits that we know for those elements. Um, some of them are only, you know, two. Um, but others have like five or six significant figures. So a lot of times what they do for a, um, a general chemistry class is they'll say, well, let's just round them all to four significant figures. And so then your molar mass is just round them to four significant figures. I'm OK with that. Um, I like to use the periodic table with masses rounded to four, mostly because I've memorized a lot of the atomic masses just by using them over and over again. And so that I know them with four. And so I don't even have to look at the table anymore. Um, so usually what we'll find when we're doing calculations is that the, the number of significant figures in the molar mass is not going to limit the significant figures in the final answer. Usually it's going to be the number that you're given in the problem. And so the number of significant figures you use here doesn't end up being um, that important. I usually start with the, um, the rounded ones from the periodic table. Just use whatever periodic table you're using. And then just write down all the digits. It's not going to get a crazy number of digits like it does when we divide um, because we're just adding things up, right? And so we usually end up with no more than four decimal places, and so it doesn't become a problem. The thing I do not want you to do, do not round masses to whole numbers. Sometimes it really doesn't matter, but other times it really does. The atomic mass of chlorine is 35.45 grams, or atomic mass units. If we round that to 35, and, and use that all the time, that's going to introduce some significant error. Now, if you rounded the mass of carbon, which is 12.01, would that cause a big problem if you rounded it to 12? Probably not. But let's not get into the habit of rounding atomic masses to whole numbers. You can do that if you're doing just a rough calculation kind of in your head, an estimation. But if you're doing an actual calculation, do not round them. Does that help? Does that answer your question? So for oxygen, is that OK? Well, for oxygen, um, the more accurate one here on the periodic table is 15.9994. 
Well, if you round that to four significant figures, it does come out to be 16.00. So that's entirely fine. Um, but we don't want to round um, things to less than four significant figures. So I'd say keep a minimum of four significant figures in your atomic masses, in your um, molecular masses. Any other questions? So what about a formula mass? Well, ionic compounds, remember, don't actually have molecules, right? So you can't find a molecular mass for an ionic compound. We call it a formula mass. It's the mass in atomic units of a formula unit. Okay? And the formula unit is just the formula for the ionic compound. It's the smallest ratio of cations and anions that gives us a neutral compound. So in practice, calculating the formula mass <clears throat> is exactly the same as calculating the molecular mass. It has a different name just because ionic compounds do not have molecules. Never trust an atom. They make up everything. Right? What makes up a molecule? Atoms. Let's calculate the molecular mass or formula mass as appropriate for each of these compounds. So propane, that's not something we expect you to be able to write the formula for, so the formula is given there. C3H8, is this a, um, an ionic compound? How can you tell? Look at what kind of elements are in this. We've got carbon and hydrogen. Are either of those metals? No, they're both nonmetals. This is a molecular compound, and so this would be a molecular mass. So we just need to look at how many atoms of carbon, how many atoms of hydrogen. Well, there's three carbon atoms, and looking at the periodic table, each carbon atom on average weighs 12.01 atomic mass units, and there's eight hydrogen atoms, and the average hydrogen atom weighs 1.008 atomic mass units. And my calculator is giving me 44.094. Atomic mass units. So just as um, a rule of thumb, you can round that. You can just say, well, all of my molar masses had four um, significant figures. I can round this to four significant figures. That is not strictly following the rules of significant figures, but it is following the spirit. And this is another place where I'm not going to trick you on significant figures. But we should always think about them. Any questions? OK, lithium hydroxide. Is that a molecular compound or an ionic compound? Ionic. The first element, lithium, is a metal. That tells me this is an ionic compound. So technically, we're finding the formula mass. What do we need before we can calculate the formula mass? The formula, yeah. You guys need to wake up. It's not that early. Lithium hydroxide. LiOH, very good. So the way we get to that is we've got lithium, and hydroxide is one that we should memorize. Lithium is in group 1A, so we know it has a plus 1 charge. And then I look at the charges on these two ions. I've got plus 1 and minus 1. And so the formula is just LiOH. So I have one lithium, one oxygen, one hydrogen. 
So to find the formula mass, I'm going to find the mass of lithium, 6.941 atomic mass units, plus the mass of hydrogen, plus the mass of oxygen. So 23.949 um, and we would round that as a final answer to 23.95 atomic mass units. This one, since there's no multiplying in here, um, we can look at um, this one has three decimal places, three decimal places, two decimal places. So by the rules of significant figures, two decimal places would limit the answer, and this ends up having four significant figures. When, when you're multiplying, um, you can get into some, some funny situations. Because yes, we're multiplying 12.01 times three, which is an exact number, right? In this molecule, there are exactly three atoms. Just like in my family, there are exactly six children, not five and a half, not six and a half. There's exactly six of them, um, and exactly eight. So those are exact numbers. But the other way you can think of this is that you're adding 12.01 three times. And so depending on how you think of it, you can end up with a different number of significant figures. And so that's why those kind of get a little wonky sometimes. Any questions about this one? Calculating formula masses and, and molar ma molecular masses is something that chemists do a lot. And so this is something that you just need to have down cold. Barium acetate, we need the formula. What kind of a compound, molecular or ionic? Ionic, right? We, we identify this, this is, I'm trying to review from yesterday. Um, we identify this by looking at the first element, barium, find it on the periodic table, it's a metal. If the thing starts with a metal, it's gonna be an ionic compound. So then to write the formula for this, we need the two ions with their charges. So barium is Ba, and it's in group 2A, so that tells me it has a 2 plus charge. And then acetate. What's acetate? Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. It's got carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in it. That's a polyatomic ion. So C2H3O2, and it has a negative 1 charge. Why is acetate C2H3O2 minus? That is a trick question. It's because that's what scientists decided to call it. There is this polyatomic ion that has the formula C2H3O2 minus, and we decided to call it acetate. There is no fancy reason. How do you remember that? You memorize it. All there is. You just have to memorize it. So I've got my two ions. I look at the charges. Based on the charges, I decide how to put them together. I'm going to need two of these to balance the charge on this. The total positive and negative charges have to add up to zero because compounds are electrically neutral. So the formula then is Ba in parentheses C2H3O2 and on the outside, a two. This is a polyatomic ion, and I have two of them. So I put parentheses around them like shrink wrap to bundle them together, and on the outside of the parentheses, I say how many of those units. Now when I calculate the formula mass for this, this two multiplies everything inside. So how many carbon atoms are in one formula unit of this compound? Four. Four. And how many hydrogen atoms? Six. And how many oxygen atoms? Four. 
So it's a little bit like the distributive property in math, you know, where if you have 2 times x plus y, that means you have two x's and two y's. So the number on the outside of the parentheses multiplies all these subscripts. Okay, so let's find this mass. Barium 137.3. There's one barium, 137.3. Now, I've been writing the units in here, and that's ideal, but I will completely understand for these types of calculations if you leave the unit out. It's just adding. Um, and it, when you get to something a little more complicated like this, it ends up taking a lot of space. So 137.3, and then we've got four carbon atoms. And the average carbon atom is 12.01 atomic mass units. And then we've got six hydrogens. The average is 1.008. I ran out of space. I'm just going to wrap it around on the next line. Um, four oxygens. Average 16, and then I add those all up. 137.4, no, 0.3. Plus 4 times 12.01. Plus 6 times 1.008. Plus 4 times 16. So calculator says 255.388 atomic mass units. If you were using that in a calculation, I would encourage you to, to just underline the uncertain digit to keep track of significant figures but use all of them to avoid rounding errors. Here we're not going on and, and doing any more calculations, so we're going to say the formula mass of this is 255.4 atomic mass units. Any questions? <laughs>